Hello, Dr. J here. Today we'll talk about the electric filter invented during World War I. These filters and vacuum tubes triggered the growth of telephone and radio communications during the 1920s and 1930s. However, with the dawning of integrated circuits in the 1960s, the op-amp allowed combining both filtering and amplification functions, now called active filters. Here in these series of videos, we'll show you how to design a wide range of analog filters. These can be applied in instrumentation systems, audio systems, communication systems, and even digital systems. So what is an active filter? To put it simply, it's a signal processor that amplifies, attenuates, or reshapes the frequency content of input signals. Now there's a whole variety of applications for these filters. In communication systems, for example, we can use the filters to suppress noise, to isolate a single communication from many channels, to prevent spillover of adjacent channels, and to recover the original signals from modulated signals. In instrumentation systems, engineers use filters to select a desired frequency components or eliminate undesired ones. In addition, we can use these filters to limit the bandwidth of analog signals, before converting them to digital signals. You also need these filters to convert the digital fill signals back to analog representations. In audio systems, engineers use filters in crossover networks to send different frequencies to different speakers. In the music industry, record and playback applications require fine control of frequency components. In biomedical systems, filters are used to interface physiological sensors with data logging and diagnostic equipment. We recall that passive filters contain only resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And although these circuits can be highly selective when losses are low and the response is highly resonant, but they suffer of passband gains no greater than one. And in addition, they suffer from loading effects, which makes the chain rule in cascade design inapplicable. Here, we will emphasize an active filter as a circuit that contains only resistors, capacitors, and op-amps. Advantages of active filters include similar frequency selectivity when compared to RLC circuits, plus having passband gains greater than 1. Because these filters have op-amp outputs, the chain rule applies in cascade design. They do not require inductors, which can be large, lossy, and expensive, especially in low-frequency applications. In active filter design, circuits realizing a given transfer function, T of S, as shown in this figure. The stages in the cascade are either first-order or second-order active filters. The real poles in T of S are produced during first-order building blocks developed earlier, and the complex poles are produced by second-order building blocks. These second-order filters will use the damping ratio and the undamped natural frequency parameters. Consequently, we design an active filter by controlling the poles introduced by each stage in a cascade connection. In the future, I will be providing sample videos in designing these active filters. However, you will need to have a knowledge of passive filter design as well as understanding the concepts of Bode plots.